chairman of the California High Speed Rail Authority. Last August, here in Fresno, Governor Jerry Brown declared his support for high speed rail in California. He said he believed California is still a place where we do big things. And we need to do big things to maintain our place as one of the world's leading economies and the home of so many new and transformational ideas. High speed rail is not new in the world. Fifteen countries have put such systems in place. But California is well suited for this technology in terms of our population, the distances between our major cities, and the mobility challenges that we face. In November, the High Speed Rail Authority published a draft plan to accomplish the development of the high speed rail system in our state. At that time, we were honest in our assessment of the magnitude of the challenge and of its costs. That plan was meant to elicit comments and critiques, suggestions and improvements. And in fact, we received many, many ideas from experts in industry, from our elected officials, from local transit operators, and from citizens across the state. Their comments and suggestions about how to do this have been taken to heart. Perhaps the most important imperative we received was from the governor himself. Build it, but make the plan better, faster, and cheaper. Today, we are releasing the revised plan for final submission to the California legislature. We have confidence in this plan, and in fact, we are excited by it. Here it is. First, beginning next year, we will commence construction here in the valley, not of a mere track, but of a fully operational, 300-mile, electrified high-speed rail system that will connect the valley to the Los Angeles basin. This system will bring high-speed rail not only to California, but it will bring high-speed rail to America. Ten years from today, starting here in Fresno, you can get on a high-speed rail train and arrive in the San Fernando Valley in one hour and 45 minutes, which is half the travel time on your best day going by car. Second, while we're building those tracks to the south, we will be working with our partners at Caltrans to immediately upgrade the popular San Joaquin service that connects Sacramento to Oakland and even San Jose from here in Fresno through the ACE train service. And I'd like to recognize Fresno's own Malcolm Doherty, uh, the acting director of Caltrans. We're working in close partnership with them. Third, we will begin improvements in urban systems like the electrification of the Caltrain service that runs between San Jose and San Francisco. Again, this will provide near-term benefits that also build a portion of the system that we will ultimately be using. And we're doing the same thing in Southern California. Fourth, our plan relies on the shared use of existing tracks in urban area, the so-called blended approach, which has been suggested by our legislature and many other experts. Reliance on that approach, which we are confident will allow us to meet the performance standards set by the voters, saves $30 billion and shortens the time to complete the project by several years. I want to thank Governor Brown as well for helping us address one of the biggest questions that was facing the high speed rail program, how we pay for the system. We now expect not only to have continued support from our federal and local partners and from the private sector, but we have access as well to a dedicated funding source revenues from the state's new cap and trade system that has been set up to address global warming. Those funds will allow us to supplement other sources and give us the ability to commence the first operating segment all the way from here to the doorstep of Los Angeles. And finally, I want to say a word about what all this means. This plan is about more than just high speed rail as a standalone system or a cool train, if you will. Our plan uses high-speed rail as a strategic tool in an integrated transportation system to meet California's growing mobility needs. Our plan is not only to build America's first high-speed rail line, but to do so while investing in and improving our urban rail systems, our existing inner-city rail systems, and enhancing freight service and goods movement by separating passenger and freight lines. It's an overall approach to building tomorrow's transportation system. 
This plan shows that California is not only still the place where we do big things, but that we know how to do them right. Thank you very much, and it's now my great honor to introduce a representative of our federal funding partners, Karen Headland, the Deputy Administrator of the Federal Railroad Administration. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Mayor, for inviting me back to Fresno. It is a great pleasure to be here today with all of you. And I'd like to start by uh, sending you greetings from the President and from Secretary LaHood and by delivering this statement on the Secretary's behalf. By listening carefully to everyone involved, the California High Speed Rail Authority has offered a new plan today that let, lays out a faster, better, and more cost-effective path to building the high-speed rail system that is so critical to California's economic future. Thanks to the leadership of Governor Brown and Chairman Richard, the new plan will create hundreds uh, and thousands of jobs and deliver the economic benefits of high-speed rail faster and more affordably. And by combining the existing assets in the Bay Area and the LA Basin with new construction along the line, the new plan ensures that a first segment of the project is fully paid for while lowering the total cost of the entire system by $30 billion. We look forward to working with the California High Speed Rail Authority and making this plan a reality. Now, when this plan was first unveiled last fall, there were a lot of questions and concerns raised. Stakeholders and citizens uh, voiced, their, voiced their concerns loud and clear, and thankfully, Governor Brown put in, lead, put in place leadership at the California High Speed Rail Authority that listened. After 296 community meetings and forums, 81 of which were held right here in the Central Valley, the plan today reflects those concerns and California will be stronger as a result. This plan is a guideway to the future of California and it's right in line with the vision of President Obama. Three years ago, the President said that he wanted to connect 80% of Americans to, high -speed rail, to the high-speed rail network over the next 25 years. The President's fiscal year 2013 budget requests $2.5 billion for rail development projects and establishes the first of a six-year strategy to invest $47 billion in our nation's rail system. We intend to be a great partner to the state of California and our other state partners going forward into the future. Today, California is well on its way to realizing the President's goal. Now, the high-speed rail program was sparked by the Recovery Act, and at a pivotal moment for our country as we were trying to dig ourselves out of the Great Recession, President Obama guided Recovery Act dollars to a rail development program that has since put Americans to work on 154 projects in 32 states. The availability of this federal funding has made something immediately clear. For too many years, states and regions have had great plans to give citizens faster, more reliable alternatives to rush hour gridlock and crowded airports. All they lacked was federal support. But today we've invested over $10 billion in support of citizens' demands for rapid mobility, for livable communities, and for freedom from escalating fuel prices. Friday night in Los Angeles, I saw my first gasoline station showing a price over $5. <laughs> but these are the people leading the charge. California has a long history of thinking big. The treasurer's office in Sacramento, there's a sign that says, it engraved in the top of the building, bring me men, should say men and women, to match my mountains. And as the public opinion poll released last month, 60% of Californians are ready for high-speed rail. They understand what this project will mean to their future and the future of California's economy. They understand that high-speed rail brings not only faster travel, but also jobs and economic development, so very important to folks in the Central Valley. Now, people, I think, outside of California don't quite understand this next point. Sometimes they talk about the thinly populated Central Valley. It always makes me grimace a little bit. 
But in less than 40 years, California will have 20 million more people than it does today. That's the population combined of the states of Texas, Florida, New York, and California. But congestion, even today, we don't have to tell you people who drive 99, robs a state's economy of $18.7 billion annually. Six of California's metropolitan areas rank among the nation's most congested. The short-haul air travel market is the nation's busiest, and the airports in San Francisco and Los Angeles are the most delayed. And double-decking our freeways and building more runways just won't work. Here in California, meeting the future demand for transportation would require building more than 4,000 miles of highways, four runways, and 115 airline gates, all for a cost significantly higher than what it will cost to build a high-speed rail system that is more efficient, less oil-reliant, and more environmentally friendly than air and auto travel. So high-speed rail should be seen not alone but is part uh, an important component of an integrated transportation system. It will alleviate pressure in our highways and airports and create the capacity California and our country must have to, con to continued economic growth. This project is critical to both California's and America's future success and it's ready to succeed. Now by stand starting here in the Central Valley, all of California's great cities are sure to be connected will also create 100,000 job years of employment in a region that suffers from some of the highest unemployment rates in the entire country. So I'd like to congratulate the chairman and the authority staff and the governor for not only developing a plan that is ba better, faster, and less expensive, but also for listening and responding to Californians' con constructive criticisms and suggestions. So for the sake of future generations, California is moving forward. Thank you for inviting me here to be here today on this very exciting day for the future of California. <laughs> it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, the California High Speed uh, Board uh, uh, member, uh, Mike Rossi. Uh, Mike uh, headed uh, risk management for the Bank of America. Uh, and serves uh, the governor in uh, his effort to expand jobs and economic opportunity in the state of California. Mike. To your, <coughs> to your everlasting boredom, I could speak in depth about the efforts over the last six months to refine ridership estimates through validating the model's sensitivity to inputs and the reasonableness of its outputs. Refining and updating inputs while at the same time testing impacts of various revenue reductions and expense increases on the financial plan. In all scenarios calculated, including a 30% increase in expenses and 30% reduction in revenues, no subsidy was required. My entire career in finance has been analyzing, reviewing, recommending, and approving risk transactions. As a result of this experience, I believe this plan is credible, reasonable, and transparent. Having said that, I would like to speak for a moment as the Governor's Senior Advisor for Jobs and Business Development. This project not unlike the interstate highway system, the state water project, or the University of California, Cal State University, and community college system, will be transformational <coughs> for California's economy and help it re remain one of the most innovative and diverse economies in the world. In the short term, it will bring many economic benefits to the Central Valley, one of the hardest hit regions in the country by the recent economic downturn, by creating thousands of direct and indirect jobs. In the long term, amongst other things, it will have a beneficial influence on travel patterns, inducing new travel with its resultant positive economic impact. It will lead to new commercial and residential real estate development, and it will allow greater and more con convenient travel possibilities 
permitting people to seek employment in major economic centers. This project, as previous investments in California infrastructure, will help keep California on the cutting edge of global competitiveness. We at the Authority look forward to the next days ahead as we explain in depth this plan to all of our stakeholders. Now I would like to introduce Tom Richards, a friend, a fellow board member, and a favored son of Fresno. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I start, I wanted to just recognize uh, Council Member Oliver Baines, who has joined us from the City of Fresno and whose district uh, is the area that you are in right now. And Oliver, thank you very much for coming here and for being such a strong supporter of high-speed rail. And secondly, if I may just take a quick moment, I'd also like to recognize uh, some of our staff members because the reality is uh, these people are what are making this project possible. Specifically, I, I'd like to mention and recognize uh, Jeff Abercrombie. Where are you, Jeff? Did he leave? Over here. Oh, there you are. Jeff, who is our, our manager for the Central Valley, and there are too many beyond that, but I want to just uh, sum you all up with Lance Simmons, our director of communications, and all of your team who have done a great job for us daily and certainly for this event today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a, a resident and a businessman here in the Central Valley and specifically in Fresno and I'm honored to be a member of the High Speed Rail Authority Board and to work with the two gentlemen uh, behind me who are both our chair and our spiritual leader in some ways, Mike Rossi, uh, although none of us understand what he's talking about. <laughs> so. What I would like to suggest to you is that I, I look at this project in a, in a way that I could not stand here today if I wasn't convinced that this it makes the most sense for the state of California and secondly, that this business plan is the appropriate way to implement it. That being said, I look at the project in general, I call it the California jet. It comes wrapped up in a huge green circle. The J is for jobs. California's unemployment rate today is 11.4 percent. Fresno County is 17.3. In fact, Fresno and the seven surrounding counties, among them, have not one county that ranks less than 39th in the state of California among 58 counties in unemployment. Merced is 55th and Fresno stands at 48th. None of this is acceptable. Our rate of reduction in un unemployment is roughly half that of the state of California. So let me tell you something. Yes, 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 I believe in the value of 100,000 job years in the next five years here in the Valley. These jobs will develop and construct high-speed rail through our Valley and in the future will provide construction jobs and operations jobs and jobs from education. And I say education because E and JET is education. In California, we have always been innovators. Our forefathers, our parents, our grandparents, and we remain innovators. The fact of the matter is, that in California we have been leaders in industry and technology for most of the time that we have been a state in this great country. What I believe will happen now is that we will develop jobs as a result of education from our colleges and universities from Cal State Bakersfield to the south and Stanislaus to the north and U University of Pacific University of California, Merced, and yes, Fresno State here in Fresno, and Fresno Pacific University. They will be jobs and training in response to the needs of high-speed rail and its technology in the move to make it better, faster, and cheaper. As high-speed rail revolutionize, revolutionizes California's surface transportation infrastructure by moving the Central Valley's human capital 
around California, whether for business or pleasure, in a fast, convenient, safe, and environmentally responsible way, it will also reduce the demand for our highways and free up capacity for commerce to help move the agricultural goods and dairy products as well as manufactured products that we build and man are manufactured here in California efficiently, more efficiently, through the markets. So to wrap it all up, I call this huge green circle opportunity. And I tell you what, Central Valley, I firmly believe that the voters in California got it right in 2008. When they went to the polls and they, stay and they voted to provide the funding, to provide the match with federal funding to make California's high-speed rail system a reality. And I firmly believe that 100 years from now, while it's still operating efficiently, that our great-grandchildren and their children will be able to point back to a day in California that may have, in fact, begun today when they can say this is the beginning of how California became the rail leader in the world. I firmly believe that. And for us in Central California, I urge you to grab your tickets, have them punched, and with these tickets, Central California can join our neighbors in Northern and Southern Californias as a full partner at the table of economic development in the state of California. I would like...